And as I stand here in front of all of you, of which there are quite a few I see, I ask you to consider the process of decolonizing yourselves. It is a jackhammer, this American industrial civilization. It is deafening. It has done much to all of us, and we have become people who live here. And the question I think that should be asked and needs to be asked of each of us is how much and how brave we are in our ability to deconstruct some of the paradigms which we have perhaps embraced. If we are able to liberate our minds, to be the people that are going to be here on this land, the people who are going to protect our mother and care for ourselves. So let me tell you a little bit about this land. That would be time for the next slide. My guys here and I work this out. There is a place where the thunder beings rest in their migration from west to east. There is a place known as the place where the Kachinas and the spirits speak to the Apache people. A place known as the place the falls of a woman's hair. These are sacred lands and sacred places to our peoples. I'm here to suggest that the holy land is actually here. Instead of, what if we deconstructed how we know these places? Instead of being called the place where the thunder beings rest in their migration from west to east, or Anamiki Wajio, up by the city of Thunder Bay, Thunder Mountain it is called in English translation from Ojibwe, it is known instead as Mount McKay. The place that the Apache people go for their prayers is known not by its traditional name, but instead as Mount Graham. This illustrates to me one of the problems I have with America, which is the naming of large mountains after small men. Now, anyone who knows me know, knows that I have nothing against men of any size. I have raised quite a few of them. I will continue to. But what I have is a problem with the construct of naming and renaming, and the idea that someone got it in their heads, that we could take something as immortal as a mountain and name it after something as puny and mortal as a human. And then what that does to our consciousness, as that is repeated generation after generation after generation, it changes how we relate to land. So whether it is Anamiki Wajio Thunder, Thunder Mountain, or it is Salilo Falls, the falls of a woman's hair that were inundated or drowned in the Dowell's Dam project on the Columbia River, it is important to remember that these are sacred places that require us as humans to recognize them. And in that process, we are able to liberate ourselves because indeed our earth is alive. It is not commodified, it is not named and planted with a flag and claimed. It is a living and spiritual being. And it is indeed possible to deconstruct some of that colonialism. So for instance, the slide you see here is Haida Gwaii. How many of you have ever heard of Haida Gwaii? About two weeks ago, the Canadian government liberated Haida Gwaii. It was previously called Queen Charlotte Island. It was renamed Haida Gwaii. Mm. That is a place that probably should never have been named after one queen. And that is a worldwide story. 
For instance, that big rock in Australia used to be called Ayers Rock. I don't know who the Ayers guy was. But if you go to Australia now, that is called Uluru, which is their name for it in their language, which has more power and reflects something that is tens of thousands of years old. And it is even possible to liberate entire countries. You know that Rhodes guy that they named the Rhodes Scholarship after? He didn't even get a rock named after him. He got a country named after him. That was Rhodesia. And that, too, was liberated with its name Zimbabwe. It is possible to let go of the naming and claiming, to deconstruct some of that and liberate our minds from the language of empire. And that will be very important if indeed we are to survive. So what does a post-empire worldview look like? I think I got a slide on this. It's kind of conceptual. Hope you go with it me on this. This is a Anishinaabe calendar. I want you to note, note a couple things. This month here, this month here is called Oday Minigizis, the strawberry moon. It is followed by a moon that is called Mean Gizis, the blueberry moon. And then we have a moon that follows that that is called Minomitake Gizis, wild rice making moon. Watibaga Gizis, which is when the leaves change color, that moon. Then we have a moon that is called Benakweo Gizis, when the leaves fall. We have a moon known as Gashkadno Gizis, freezing over moon. Manadu Gizis Soons, little spirit moon. Giji Manadu Gizis, great spirit moon. <clears throat> Nimei Ben Gizis, sucker moon. My personal favorite, Anabana Gizis. That great sound? Anabana Gizis. That means hard crusted snow moon. Also, the moon you do not want to do a face plant in the snow. <laughs> Maple syruping moon, flower moon, Wabagana Gizis. Why did I tell you all those? You see them here. I told you all those because did you notice that none of those moons is named after a Roman emperor? It is okay to have an entire worldview that has nothing to do with empire. It can last a very long time. And in that awesome little chart I had up there, I don't know if you noticed, we even had orthography that was not Roman in there. We write in syllabics in the north, which of course, the syllabics we got because of the priests, you know. That's how most languages end up being translated in indigenous communities, because they want to give us the Bible. But we did get some pretty good dictionaries out of that process. <laughs> I don't know if any of you noticed when the Pope went someplace in Central America in 1992, he went down there, and a lot of Native people came to see him, and they brought their Bibles. And they said, you know, when you came the first time, we had the land and you had the Bibles. Now, uh, we have the Bibles and you have the land. We would like to give you back your Bibles. We would like to give them back a few things, too, like their papal bulls. We would like to ask the Unitarians to join with indigenous nations and other churches to both endorse the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People and to oppose and rescind any support for the doctrine of Christian discovery. <clears throat> we are quite confident that we did not get discovered. We were on to the fact we were here. <laughs>